Dance. Shout out to Smooth and Groove for putting those smoothies together. Thank you, Smooth and Groove. Dance. So guys, hey listen, this is Keon Davis and this is the Making Smoothie Magic Podcast. That's right, Smooth and Groove has its own podcast and we're bringing you dope individuals with dope conversations. All while we make a smooth. You ready? Let's get it. Sir, no, what's up, bro? How you doing? Man, I'm great. How are you? Man, fantastic. Fantastic. Yo, yeah, what do you have your phone sitting on right now? Uh, right now? I got a little tripod. I need to get one of those. <laughs> hey, I kept seeing the same thing. I'm like, bro, how these folks just doing this junk and the phone just sitting there and, and, and I'm trying to talk to them and I'm all like this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah most definitely. Most definitely. How you been, though, man? Man, I'm good, man. But, you know, Trying to stay out the way. Trying yeah. To stay out the way. Trying to keep myself stimulated, keep myself motivated. Um, keeping a lot of people in my, in my prayers, man. A lot of people that I know here in Detroit, man, are losing family members, bro. So, uh, you know, I'm just keeping them in my thoughts, man. And, you know, just really just, just you know, just stay out the way, man. And just really just stay positive the whole day. You know, yeah. there's, a lot, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on, man. How you yeah. doing? Man, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm, I'm on the same topic, man. I'm really just refocusing. Right, yeah. kind of, kind of, kind of trying try to control my energy, kind of controlling yeah. my thoughts, you know, and, and all those different types of things. So I, it don't, they don't get away from me because it's easy. Right. It's easy to get distracted. It's easy to, you know, be focused on one thing, and something happens, and it's automatically taking you in a whole other direction. You know, because you feel like we have time, or you know, we got it. Really, it don't really matter. We got enough. We, we're not going nowhere on no time soon, right? So, right, right. you know, for me, it's like I got things that I want to accomplish and that I'm trying to do. So I have to make sure that I'm always on point. And it's helping me a lot, man. It's, it's really helping me um, to create new habits. Um, one of the habits that I created, and, it, and it's simple, um, just making the bed every day. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just started doing that too, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, wife, my wife got me on that jump, and, and it was like, at first, you know, she kind of hit me with the like, why you don't ever make a bed? And I'm like, well, shoot, I mean, that ain't just, that's just something I don't think about, you know? And then we had a conversation that was like, hey, I was reading that if you start making up the bed, it does certain things for you. It helps you kind of get things focused. And I'm like, ah, okay. So now I'm starting with like that simple habit of trying to create that that habit and to see the the feeling that I get when I do make the bed, right? And then on top of that, the feeling that I get when I forget to make the bed. You know what I'm saying? How you feel like, hey man, I, it was just. You know, and you start to get on your own head about it. Like, bro, it's just making up the bed, bro. Don't take no time. Like, just make that decision to make the bed. And I can tell how how it helps me make that decision and be accountable for just right. that small little thing. You know what I mean? Right. And it feels so much better to get into the main bed at the end of the night. Man, who you telling me? So <laughs> <laughs> I, never, I never realized that until we started doing it. You know, and it's like, yeah. hey, this you know, it's nice. And my thought was like, bro, I'm messing with it anyway, so it don't even matter if it's made up. You just ready to go eat that single day, so you just get up and get going. You right. Know, you right, you know, right, right, right. And it take you maybe maybe a minute to, to make your bed up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's such a good habit, man. I, I definitely agree with you on creating good habits, man. Like, you know, I've been getting back into my affirmation game every morning, like, because I've been recording some affirmations. It's funny, I recorded some affirmations two years ago. Mm. When my voice broke my phone, I used to listen to it every morning and talk to myself in the mirror every morning. And uh, since we get so with the aware brand, we've been getting back into the affirmation on every Monday. Um, to our email uh, list, and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna start looking my affirmations in the morning, and it's really been helping me. Um, and just like you said, just creating good habits, like getting out three days off the week, that's what at least one of we be talking in this game, mm-hmm. that, talking yeah. about that, right? Yeah. Working out, man, just really doing a lot of uh, personal care, bro. A lot yeah. of personal care, bro. That's, that's really what I've been focusing on. You know, we could really try to uh, focus on the business, 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 business all day. Right. But there's gonna be time for that, man. I mean, we really don't get, you know, this, this leisure, this time to really be at home with our family, to really right. be at home chilling. So it's so important, man, to tap into our personal lives and our personal selves right now and, you know, just develop that side of us, you know? Yeah, so man. I, 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 I really rock with that, bro. Yeah, bro. I, and and the, the most important thing to me is, is that I'm starting to learn, like, 
the things that it takes to become a great human, right? You know what I'm saying? And not just like a great dad or a great husband or, you know what I'm saying, a great son or a brother. Like, like what does it take to become a great human? You know what I mean? And once I, once I start to kind of, kind of put that, put that in perspective, then everything else that I'm doing, everything else that I look at and the way that I, like the way that I approach the day is, is completely different. Cause now I feel like I'm operating on love now. Right, I'm operating on on like how can I be a helping hand to somebody else? Like, what can I do to put a smile on someone's face with something that's not gonna? It's not a big thing to me, but it may change that person's whole outlook on life. You know what I mean? Just on just on a on a compliment, or even you know, because one thing that I think about too, bro, is that we all have thoughts in our head when it comes to other people, right? We all think like, man, that boy Drew doing his thing, right? But we don't understand the effect that it has on that person if we was just to tell them, right? If we was just, if we was just to tell them how we feel, like if I was to see something, and I've been practicing that, so if I see somebody on IG, if I see somebody doing something, like I automatically, whatever thought comes to my head, and, and, it, and it has to be positive, you know what I mean? And even if it's a negative thought, try to figure out why it's a negative thought, right? And then turn that negative thought into a positive, like, hey, I see, you was doing this, instead of doing this, look at it like this, bro. I think it may be more effective for you. You know what I mean? And look at look at it like that. And the effect that excuse me, the effect that it has on other people, bro, is like crazy. It's crazy, dog. Yeah, you always be feeling that too, but you always be feeling like showing love, bro. Like that's one thing I can get this part of that. That's Man, do me a favor, Drew, before we keep going, because I know we're going to go on. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, and we got a lot of stuff to touch bases with and, and catch up on. Man, tell these people who you are, what you've done, like, why you so dope, and, like, and I know it's hard, and, like, it's always, everybody that I bring on here, it's hard for them not to be, to have humility and be humble. But this is a point where I want you to just lay it all out, let them know everything you do, and, and, and all that junk. Man, I like the, I'm, that's good, man. I just keep, I've been trying to speak because I'm like a jack of all trades, bro. Like I do a lot, so I have a, I have a, um, I have an army platform called Army Untapped. I've been using that a lot of this tape company called Five Nation Tape for the last five years, which I started in Tuskegee University as a management company, but we 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 switched gears a little bit and started producing our own events. Um, so uh, so the Army Untapped is a platform showcasing. Tomorrow's army superstar. So our audience is like the early adopters of tomorrow's army superstar. Maybe we had everybody on our show from Ari Lennox before she got popped in. Aaron Ray, Mariba, uh, Jacob Lavenmore, uh, Tamar Jackson. Yeah. Uh, shit, I mean, the list goes on, bro. Yeah. We had over 50 artists on our platform, man. So, um, 60 artists, you know, just performing wise. And then, uh, so I also have a, 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 a clothing apparel line called um, The Aware Brand, which is pushing the positive message of self love, self awareness. Um, we know that self-awareness is the bedrock of all awareness. Right. So we end this really prioritize. We're really aiming to our community. You see that truck anywhere in the city, pull up, man. Tell them, what's your Instagram page? So, and, and then hopefully put that energy out to other people. So that got me aware of brands. And uh, I also work for Pinot Picard, which is a liquor supplier company. One of the number two supplier company in the world. So we have brands like Martell, Jameson, Avion. Um, Kalua, Malibu, Glenn Levin, GH Monk. I'm the activation specialist here for them here in Detroit. So I produce all the activations for locally here in the city of Detroit for those brands. Um, but I, was, I just call myself a creative strategist and a, 
in the in the in the, in the, in the lifestyle. I, I can even say he's a uh, lifestyle specialist, but right. I'm constantly that new version. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I, I I love to create experiences for like people of color. Like that's what I love to do. That's like a passion for me, and I love to inspire. So those activations are always inspiring for people. Bro. I always try to even that R&B and tap. I believe you know. If I leave them with something like positive, for them to leave off with, you know what I'm saying? Just right. give some positive words or what they wear, man. It's all about positivity, man. So my thing is this, man. I, everything that I produce and curate, I want to instill that inspiration into the people, man. And, and hopefully they can leave a better person when it comes to one of my experiences. That's, That's big. It. That's big. That's big. Yeah, and I, and I definitely, um, I definitely just remember those days go back and ski. You know what I mean? Where we we pulling up the Drew crib, Drew got the studio set up in one of the rooms. You know what I mean? We in there making music, writing music. We sitting on top of the washer and dryer, coming up with ideas, and you know what I mean? And just having that, having that powwow and that that it's almost like a mastermind group. You know what I mean? Of people that that's trying to create, the people that's trying to you know expose themselves to more and and wanting to do things at a young age, bro. Like we were yeah. young doing this jump. You know what yeah. I mean? And we we felt that there was nothing that we couldn't obtain. You know what I mean? Right. From like from even with, with us working with Blake and how I was able to take him to shoot these videos and, and get on BT and like all of like all yeah. this stuff in college, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and meet all these people and, and how you were able to take artists and, and people and have them performing at different stages and and like all of that stuff, bro. It's like to have that type of mindset, bro. Like I'm so like I'm so attracted to people's minds and how they think. You know what I mean? And how they feel about themselves and and to, to understand that we are the same people from back then, right? We're the same, we got the same mindset. That's why when you said you was listening to some affirmations a couple years ago, from a couple years ago and how they touched you. Bro, I just listened to some voice promos the other day, bro, and they had me in my room like crying in tears. You know what I mean? Because of where my mind was and what I was able to do and to hear what I was thinking about then and then to be able to accomplish that and to see that happen. You know what I mean? Like to hear yourself, it's almost like talking to a young version of yourself. 100%. You know what I mean? And it's like, okay, cool, you good, bro. Like, I hear how you feel right now, but you good, because we yeah. we're about to make that happen. Yeah. Like, you know, and just having that connection with those things, man, I think it's so amazing, bro. So amazing. Yeah, man, we, we, we Tuskegee, man, I, I definitely say that's why I see Chief Till in the chat. What up, Chief? But uh, I, I mean, I, I, uh, man, Tuskegee taught us a lot, bro, man. Tuskegee taught me how to be creative, bro. Yeah. You know, uh, because we didn't really have much. Like, man, you go to an HBCU in Atlanta or in DC, you know, or, you know, so we didn't have, like, those different platforms. So we had to create those platforms. Right. So I took that same energy that I that I had in Tuskegee and brought them to Atlanta or bring that here in Detroit or bring it back home to New York. So, like, I, I mean, we just, I'm just a creator, man, and I learned all that shit at Tuskegee. Right. right? So I'm, I, I definitely pay homage to that because, man, we all have to create. Yeah. We all have to create, bro. We all have to come up with something and you know also our PIT professor man in retrospect uh, you know you know me and you had uh, <laughs> Mr. Freeman you know yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the said all we had was each other that's, that's, that's it but, but yeah you know, we, cause we got the Tuskegee rock up the, uh, uh, the business house with each other with each other yeah. you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying so but um but yeah, man, like, that, I, I definitely feel you with, with going back to those voice notes, man, because I write, I write a lot, bro. I write a lot. I have, like, tons of journals. I got one right here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I write every day, and um, I was looking at one of my journals uh, for a few years back, and um, it was, like, a to-do list or a goal to have, uh-huh. and I read it. I was like, oh, I'm actually doing this right now. Like, I am doing what I wanted to do. Like, when I right. write now, I'm like, damn, I'm doing this. And it's just so crazy um, that it's a power in words and it's a power in writing things on paper and writing in black and white. You gotta see it mm-hmm. to, to, to really like manifest what you want. Right. So, man, that's why I definitely, I definitely dig what you're talking about, bro. Man, definitely. I appreciate that, bro. Let me ask you this though: where, where was it? Like, where did you get like that hunger from? from? Like with that hustle mentality, that hunger, like that, that because it's certain people. I, I, I look at you as almost like an outline, right? Like you're you're someone that kind of defeats the odds, and, and you're kind of creating your own path. And um, like I talked about with my guy yesterday, um, we're kind of trailblazers, right? Like we're we're, we're clearing paths, so we're like the Messiah of our family. We're the Messiah of our, you know what I mean, of our people, right? And so within that, like, where did you get that that whole like like mentality? 
man, it, it, man, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a product of a person who suffered from mental depression and mental, like, just really just, like, dealing with the beat, like, that small voice in your head that's telling you that you can't. I'm that person who, who, who dealt with that, so I had to really put in a lot of work to tell myself who I am. Like, I had to, so that took years, bro. Right. So, but I, let's, let's start from the beginning. Like, I grew up in a single parent home in New York. My mom, man, I lived in a one bedroom apartment until I was in ninth grade. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people see me now and say, like, yo, um, <laughs> Drew good, you know what I mean? Especially in college, but they don't even know the backstory. You know what I'm saying? Like, that would be struggling, man. My mom would eat my baby food just to eat, you know what I'm saying? Because she couldn't afford to get her own meal. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's a lot of different things. So to see my mom take nothing and build this whole entire that was the first thing that like sparked that day. You see, man, my mom showed me that you can do anything that you put your mind to, and that she's a true hustler. And, and I told her her birthday was on Sunday, so I sent her a video. I was like, Yo, I you know, think the reason why I told myself that I'd be great because I came from you, because you're great. You know what I'm saying? So, so one is my mom. My mom definitely laid a strong foundation in my life to show what hard work it really is. Um, then I would say, um, you know. Went to the desire. Man, I had a lot of people. I've come across a lot of paths in my life. You know what I'm saying? So I met a lot of dope people. And I was and I told myself, I want to be like this guy. I want to be like this person. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I just started formulating this this idea of who I want to be in my mind. So um, and I, I studied these guys. Like I remember before I started RB Attack, I watched like so many soul training uh, episodes on YouTube. And I just studied the way how Don Rene was, was doing his thing on the, on the stage and. And I looked up his backstory and I was keeping him out. Uh, I always uh, uh, looked up to Barry Gordy. So I read a lot of Barry Gordy information online and Puff Daddy. You know, everybody used to call me Diddy in college, right? Yeah. Basically. So I looked up Puff and I was trying to figure out how they mindsets were just being relentless, man. And Deion Sanders was one of my favorite athletes growing up in, uh, as a kid. And Alan Robinson was the smallest guy on the court. But he put his heart on the line every time. So I just developed all of those. I just meshed all these different people in and then put that into me, man. So. And then also, I just knew that me, I know who I am. So I right. know that I was destined for all this shit. So right. I just always just prepared myself, man. And I'm, and I'm an ex athlete too. So you already know being an athlete, that be and kind of like pushing that position to be hungry every time you hit that field right. or you hit that court. So, right. um, but I just got the hungry, man, just being motivated by, by my peers or by people in my life, man. And, um, it's, it, it took time, bro. It took time yeah. because I used to always, I used to tell myself reading stories, man. I used to tell myself the wrong stuff growing up because mm. of, of what people used to put, so used to put, what people used to put on to me, right? Like insecurity. So I kind of believed that shit growing up, right? right. So right. I had to get all the way out of that and I had to tell my stories to man. myself. You bro, it's, it's two, it's two things from what you just said that both of them resonate with me personally, right? And I've dealt with those situations personally, right? The first one was the single mom, bro. Like, my mom is, she raised four boys by herself, bro. Like, my mom had me at 15, you know what I'm saying? She had me at 15 years old, dropped out of school, went back to school at 17, took junior and senior classes, and still 